Oh yeah, I have to remember what we have where we left off last time. I have to remember. Let the proceed proceeding be resumed. Alright. Mikester McGrill. Have you been listening to the Discord of the day? Okay, nice. I forgot I totally forgot what we are doing here. Uh the details, let's just put it that way. <laughs> to be sure I have, my lord. There are now two matters on which the court desired to hear from you. The first is whether or not there was a third party with you in the omnibus cabin as proposed by the defense. The second is that if such a person was indeed present, why did you conceal the fact from the police? Okay, okay, this is interesting, okay. Begard, no. This not in my nature to hide anything at all. Okay. So there is no third person there. Just answer the question, please. The truth of the matter is, I have been desperate about this all along. Do I tell you yours all or keep my mouth shut? Okay, okay. Tell us what, Mr. McGrew. Hello, Lord. The fine fella representing me is absolutely right. In the carriage of in the carriage of the night with myself and the other man, there was another passenger. Okay. Why do you why did he tell us about this? Why? What the fuck? Why? It's true? Hey. And this was me who helped the little urchin get away after it all happened. Why? You I got emotional damage. Emotional damage. Shit. Medic. Medic. <laughs> okay, why? Why did he hide the fact, man? No, Magnus McGrill. That convenient excuse can save you now. I'm truly sorry, uh, so I am, Lord Vangzik. I'm sure you'll be wa wanting to know why I'm saying say nothing when I was taken in by the police. I do be having a very good reason, I assure you. Okay, which was it? What's the problem? Well, the little child was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and not in any way involved, you see. It's a child? What? If the police had knew, have known the wee one was there, they did have assumed she's done it. They did have hired her into this court, this here courtroom, just like myself. I was only trying to spare her that. Okay. Young hearts and young minds are easily damaged, my lord. Okay. Hmm. And who was this young child of whom you speak? He the one let us know. That I don't know. Or he just don't know. You don't know? Hey, well, the wee thing just happened to be in the carriage that, that night. I never saw her before or since. We have absolutely no reason to believe this man. The prosecution calls for the witness statement to be disregarded by the court. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if the urchin isn't here in the courtroom as we speak, listening to the proceeding. What? Oh shit, another gunshot? Oh, what? What happening? Ah, uh, smoke. Oh, what? Fire? There's a fire? Someone's trying to get away. Oh shit. Oh, what's happening? Holy shit! Accident in the courtroom? What? The disrespect! <laughs> Where's the police? Be careful, Mr. Narodo. Cover your face. Balif. Don't let the accused escape. Secure the omnibus. I hear back call an emergency recess. Balif, ensure the defendant is in custody and clear the courtroom. Shit. We will hurry and remove from the smoke filled courtroom by Balef. A main scene of chaos as people stumble over one another in their dis desperation to flee the chamber. We had no idea what was happening. All we knew was that, for the time being at least, the trial was suspended. Ah, this is con to be continued? I was so close to be having that to be continued. Okay. Never mind that. <laughs> the last time I was thinking this, this is, this is get taking pretty long. <laughs> But yeah, okay, yep. Okay, we just gotta save this. Yeah, we are going into the part three, right? Yes, 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 yes. We're in the part three. I think February. Yeah. Where did we roll? 
What's on earth just happened in there? Mr. Naruhodo, I have managed to find out what happened, Miss Susato. I was told it was an advanced form of smoke grenade, a type of exploding device, exploding device that releases smoke. A smoke grenade? It, it sounds like the sort of thing ninjas use. In the most smoke grenade vanish, disappear. I'm peace, peace out, my my dude, peace out, my dude. <laughs> They're just making sure everything is safe now. I think the trial will start again before long. But who would have done something like that? The police managed to catch someone who was trying to flee the courtroom apparently. Oh, that guy suck! That guy suck! <laughs> he even used a smoke grenade and couldn't run. What the hell? Flee the courtroom? Why? Well, it's a young girl of around 15 I heard. Damn. A young girl? Then could it be? The other passenger that Mac Mr. McGill was ta just talking about. My thoughts, exactly. So he wasn't lying. Oh, what's become of Mr. McGrill actually? There are so many things I need to ask about him, but he's not here. I think he was summoned to the prosecutor and enter an empty chamber, enter chamber to answer the question, along with the young woman. Who is she, I wonder? And what was she even doing here at the trial? She was taking a huge risk, and for what purposes, for, uh, for what possible benefit to herself? There's another matter that's troubling me. What's that? The 20 pence. Okay, um, okay, mm hmm. Yeah, if the another, ca another person was in the car carriage, then probably it shouldn't be sum up to 20 pence, right? According to co Couchman, Mr. Beepo. Okay, okay, such a for, such a book, yeah. He took pa four passengers that night at a fare of five pence each. That comes to a total of twenty pence exactly. But now it seems there were in fact five passengers, which means the figures doesn't seem to add up again. Uh, she's right. That's strange. Console for the defense kindly proceed into the courtroom. The trial will recommence in five minutes. Oh, nice. Let's go. We we'll go in straight away. Let's go. Well, wherever she is, I imagine this young girl will be asked to take the stand and testify now. I really can't imagine what she's going to say, but it could alter the whole direction of the trial. We'll know soon enough, Miss Susato. Yes. Yes, we will know soon enough. Yep. We know who she is, she'll show her face, and then we know who she is, who she is. Oh no, she's not showing her face. Who's, who's this girl? Okay. You suck, man. <laughs> you suck at trying to run away, man. What the fuck? <laughs> There's a young girl next to Mr. McGill. Look, she must have been the one who caused the disturbance before. Okay, well, after that rather eventful recess, the court will now resume the trial of Mr. Magnus McGill. Now then, Lord Van Zick, my lord, I believe you have established the cause of the smoke which Weld proceeding earlier. It seems to have been an advanced form of smoke grenade, the sort of, of the sort of the sort typically employed by the army. Good gracious, the army? What in the devil's name? It was an elaborate attempt by a young lady, a young girl, to cloak her escape from the public gallery, but she was caught. Yeah, she suck. <laughs> and now occupies the stands. <laughs> hmm, your name, girl? Da -da -da. Are you responsible for the smoke grenade which inducts such pandemonium in here in my courtroom? Yep. Answer me. <laughs> what is the meaning of this deplorable behavior? Da -da -da. Um, if I may, my lord. Yes, Mr. McGrew. I think perhaps I ought to explain here. Why is it that this wee lass was here in the first place and why she tried to bolt like that? This all tied up with the events of the of that night, so it is. Hmm. Very well, Mr. McGrew. Give your testimony. You will explain to the court exactly how this young woman is involved in this case. Yeah, when Zack suck it. There's a third person there, okay? That's what did happen that night. Suck it. It's not like a defense lawyer need that information or anything. <laughs> it's 
it's pretty weird that this guy just wishes on on life just just for a little girl. Okay, the young girl. Okay. On the night in question, I took the back seat in the omnibus and probably nodded off. Okay, he sl sl sleep. Okay. Then Bigora, a loud talk, and V scream woke me up with a fair start. There was a fella collapsed on the floor at my feet, so I sat him up on the seat across from me. So he was on the floor. Okay. Then I turned to find out where that scream had come from, and bless my soul, what did I find? There was a child in there, all curled up in, like, in a ball, hiding her wee self away. Yep, okay. Dot, dot, dot. I remain somewhat baffled, I confess, but from what I gathered on the night in question, this young girl was intent riding, in, uh, was indeed riding in the omnibus, is that correct? This exactly as the defense console said. This last was the fifth passenger, my lord. Okay. Very well. The defense may now cross-examine the weaknesses. Are you ready, console? Yes, my lord. Or rather, no. I have no idea where to start. When <laughs> just dot dot dot, yeah. Where's the wine at now, bitch? Where's the wine at now? <laughs> I thought you were sipping some wine, sip sip. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> the young girl. Okay. I have only two trials left. <laughs> oh no. On the night in question, I took the back seat in the omnibus and promptly nodded off. Okay, he's just sleep. This bastard. And when you first got onto the omnibus, were there any passengers already on the board? They were not. The cabin was empty, and there was no one on the roof deck either, so he's the first person to be there. You were the first passenger, as it were, I see. Hey, and that's why I took the back seat side, as I did. This most comfortable, so it is. Could you explain exactly what you mean by this back seat? The back seat? By all means, this is how you already described it earlier. I'm talking about the seat opposite the one in which the poor gentlewoman, gentleman was who was stabbed was sitting. Like I said, this was most comfortable and where I find most at ease. And of course, I enjoy gazing through the skylight from time to time as well. But why do he need to take an omnibus? He's rich, right? He should have his own carriage. <laughs> okay. A loud tug, you say, and a scream? Hey, that's right. How can I explain it? There was like the sound of someone falling to the ground. That sort of sound. That sort of noise. So you think it was the sound of Mr. Mason falling to the floor, have, having been stabbed? Well now, you remember I was asleep at the time, so I wouldn't like to say. And when the sound woke me and I opened my eye, there wasn't a soul to be seen in the carriage, but the fella on the floor. Hmm, you didn't see anyone, but at the same moment, you did hear a scream? Ah, from the seat above you on the f roof deck, I presume. Not above me, no lord, my lord. That was from inside the cabin. But I wasn't altogether thinking about the scream. No, I was too stunned by the desperate sight before my eyes. Okay. You, you set him up? The victim, you mean? That I did, on the seat across from me, as, as I said. I could paint, plainly see the proper devil was already gone. And you, wouldn't, and you wouldn't leave a dead man just lying on the floor now, would you? This common courtesy, so it is. I find that a little hard to believe. Ara, Lord Vanzek, now why would that be? You wait to find a man lying dead at your feet in a carriage. Any normal person would howl the cabman. Any upstanding member of London society, that is. Yeah, he will stop the cabman, I guess. Well now, as you know, I'm in something of a special line of business. 
the business of lending money at exorbitant rates of interest? Unfortunately, my lord, not everyone is thankful for the help I've offered them, and some would even see me dead. So I do try, where at all possible, to avoid getting myself myself in a tangle of with trouble. Uh, are you suggesting you were just going to leave the man over there? Heavens, uh, heavens alive, no. I was always intending to report it as I was. Only I had a mind to find out the whys and whereabouts first. A uh, wherefore first. The whys and wherefores? Right, you are. There were some details I wanted to understand before anyone else got to meddling. That we scream I heard, for example. Wouldn't your good self do just the same? Hmm, yes. The scream he said he heard at the same time as the top of the victim collapsing. Then I turned to find out where the scream has come from and bless my soul, what did I find? Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. I'm sure you told the court that there was no one else in the carriage except yourself and the victim. So I did, sir, so I did. As far as I could see, that is. What do you mean by that? Well now, this a cruel thing. The wee scream I heard as I woke up. It came from, if you, ask, you will excuse the vulgar expression, under my backside. Good gracious. Under your backside? And when I lifted the seat on which I did be sitting, I found there was a wee chubby hole there for storage. Mr. Naruhodo, we can examine the omnibus ourselves, remember? Yes, of course. The whole bus was submitted as evidence. This would be a very good time to have a true outlook around inside. We did find that out. We did find that out like last stream. So. And that's when I found her. Which is that girl. Oh, she was in the... The, the back seat. So there is one more passenger then, I guess. You said she was hiding herself. Aye, that's right. There was hard to see in the dim lamp light, but she was all curled up in a wee ball when our eyes meet. Well, me heart nearly stopped beating in me chest. Uh, you are really overreacting. Overreacting this. Still, and all, I pull her out from under there and set her on the seat opposite so I could have a wee chin bang with her. The seat opposite? That's right, just next to the dead gentleman there. You said this young girl next to the corpse, sir? Well, as I'm sure I mentioned, a gentleman in my position can all too often find himself in a mortal danger. So, I needed to find out who was this big urchin was, you see. Hmm. And while I was in the middle of talking with her, I heard another scream, a fella voice this time. Presumably that scream was Mr. First, who was sitting on the roof deck seat. Right, you are again, I would say sir. Looking down through the skylight, he must have seen this young girl and the gentleman with the knife in his belly. In other words, their previous weakness did not, in fact, see you at all, Mr. McGirl. What they believed to be yourself and the victim was in fact this girl and the late Mr. Mason? Hey, my lord. I was, as I think everyone understand now, sat at the back of the carriage, out of sight. It is certainly possible. The defendant is somewhat diminutive in stature and readily confused perhaps with this young girl after that of course with the scream of the gentleman over us the driver realized something was wrong and pulled up the horses thank you i have heard enough the events as explained are clear in my mind however at least one conundrum remains who is this girl her name is Gina Lestrade, my lord. She is a chan chancer. Earn her trust among large crowds, relieving people of their purses. 
what commonly called a pickpocket. Okay, 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 it's a thief. Okay, all right. Okay, what? <laughs> this girl is here, a PD thief. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Order, order. Is this true, Miss Lestrade? Da -da -da. Miss Lestrade, you will answer the question. What the fuck with that gun? What the hell? He just shoot the judge? What the fuck? <laughs> How dare you? Eh? What is the meaning of this? He's gone. She's gone. She's gone. Ah, the girl. She's gone. Open your eye. Open your eyes. Oh well. Okay. What? I'm over here. The hell? <laughs> Good gracious. How? What, what, what was the point in that little side stat? <laughs> I know what you lot are thinking. Grown-ups are all the same. This dirty little deeper you would say slid up and got caught on the job. She got herself back into a corner so she knifed the gent. Go on. That works in your ear, ain't it? Your head, your head, ain't it? No, not at all. This is court of law. We are here to determine the truth, not cast. I got shoot again? What the fuck? <laughs> I, now I got shoot. <laughs> the fuck? Look, knives are for cowards. Only thugs will use a weapon like that. All I need for what I do is these fingers. I'm a professional, right? Maybe not in your eyes, but I got pride in what I do. Hell yeah. Let me guess, you don't count smoke guns among weapons for Turks. Or this? Yeah, this was in a bag I lifted the other day, down where they keep the four wheel drags. Four wheel drags. So in is in the carriage? It's nice, isn't it? I like the pink best. Ah, oh, don't wave that thing in my direction again. Oh, there's a wine, there's the wine. <laughs> So, you admit that you were riding the omnibus on the night in question? Da -da -da. This alright, lass. You can tell them the truth now. Alright, yeah. It's just like the Irish man said. The court upset this girl, Miss Gina Lestrade, as a valid and significant witness in this case. According to Lee, young lady, will now hear your testimony, please, if you please. Okay, let's ask her her side of the story. You will tell the court exactly what happened in the omnibus on the night in question. Alright, if I have to. What the girl saw. So I snuck inside the carriage before they hooked up the horses, just like always. Okay. But it was a right, right old waste of time. I got enough, nothing to show for my trouble that night. I'll tell ya, you can't see a blind thing in that hiding place. It's pitch in there. Then after a while, I heard this loud bang nearly jumped out of my, my skin. I, I did. And the scream just came out. It's because of that this swell found me. Uh, did help me get away in that mine. Yes, he let you go. I fail to understand why you would let this street urchin go, Mr. McGur. Oh, is this simplicity itself, my lord? You see, she couldn't possibly have killed the other passengers. I knew that from for for a fact. How? As I'm sure I said before, sir. I was sitting right on top of the place where she was hiding herself. Okay, yeah. I think a demonstration is called for. Oh, okay, because you're sitting in f above him, so he couldn't lift up the seat. This is where I was sat that night, and the chubby hole of which you have spoken is underneath this seat, I presume? Yeah. Hmm, yes. It does appear just large enough to accommodate someone of the girl's stature. Hey, but of course, Jerry last was stuck in there. 
Because I did park myself myself on the seat for the duration. Ah. So you see, that's why I let the last boat. I knew that if the police found her there, they did automatically assume that she did done it. But I couldn't live with myself if a young life was ruined when all the time I knew she was innocent. Even though you sh must have realized your action would result in your own innocence being called into questions. Not at all, my lord, not at all. I knew in my own heart that I was innocent. Damn. <laughs> okay. So I thought it was worth taking a pun on my own good name for the sake of this last fortunate loss. My goodness. What a perfect gentleman. My lord, this, this fine example of a man cannot possibly be guilty of a heinous crime like this. Hello, man. Hello, man. <laughs> I'm ashamed of myself for even doubting you, sir. We shall see, man. We shall see. We still have to, like, do examination. Have to find out who the murderer is. With calm, calculated reasoning, one arrives clearly at the truth every time. Damn. Innocent. Uh, my, my job here is done, yeah? I think my job here is done. Saints alive. All six members of the jury consensus in their learning to a verdict of non-guilty. My job here is done, yes. It was easy, easy peasy, yeah. Mr. Naruhodo. This, well, it must mean. It must mean what? That we are victorious. Yes, yes. I know, we, we have to see whether Van Zack gonna do anything. The vampire. We have won? Are you, are you sure? Oh, the leg, man. <laughs> Where's the respect on the court? What the hell? If the sight of my iron here will turn off for offense, pray do forgive the discords to see. This really is a consummate example of the one monumental flaw in British judicial practice. Where evidence and reasoning should be paramount, emotions rules the day. Emotions. The witness's latest statement gives us a clear insight into his true nature. What do you mean, his true nature? Do you really think Scotland Yard would have made such a glaring omission? After the incident, the omnibus was comprehensively searched by officers of the police. Obviously, the interior of this chubby hold, as the witness put it, was included in their investigation. Okay, so what's wrong about it? The compartment under the post parrier seat was full of coachman's belongings. Oh, it's noted in black and white here in the police report. Shit, good lord. The evidence has been tampered with. In order to corroborate Mr. McGirt's story, someone has unlawfully removed everything from under the seat. Shit. I thought I was victorious. God damn it. Order, order. <laughs> I can be the judge now. How could such a devious contrivance possibly have been effected, Council? Naturally, we must acknowledge the def efficiency of the constabulary in allowing this to have happened. I don't understand what that means. <laughs> However, I saw you when the omnibus was wheeled into the courtroom this morning. The compartment under the seat was not empty. It was full of stuff. Well, my Nipponese friend, hmm, me, when the carriage was submitted as evidence, doubtless you examine it in fine detail as would any self-respecting practitioner of the law. Pray, what did you find the condition of the underseat of compartment to be? Oh god. To be sure, the young gentleman will be able to clear this up in a jiffy. Sorry? Go ahead. You tell the court now, fella. How this is an is all an elaborate excuse by the desperate Lord Van Zick. No, actually, when we first look at the court, 
uh, when we first look at the the, the, the the carriage, right? I remember there was some stuff, but it's not full of stuff. There were some there was some some there was there were a brief briefcase at least. I would say they they're at least a briefcase, right? There was something there. Well console, do you have something to say on this matter? How am I supposed to answer? What can I say about the state of the little compartment under the seat in the omnibus? It wasn't- I didn't look. It wasn't empty. I remember it wasn't empty when I first saw it. I really don't know if I am giving this answer is helping my cause as console for the defense. But as far as I remember, at least... When I first examined the compartment, I'm fairly certain there was a number of artic- articles inside it, yes? Uh, are you sure, console? Allah, be wise. What are you saying now, you daft dog? I thought you were on my side here. I'm a friend of justice. <laughs> I'm a friend of justice, so... <laughs> I don't know. That's what I saw. I just said what I saw. Uh... <laughs> what game are you playing? Your task is to defend the man in the stand. I mean, I don't want to let go of murder if in any case, you know. I'm not fully trusting that guy. <laughs> Why would you say something to compromise his position? Because it's the truth. They shall know lies in the court. <laughs> As I advocate for the defense in this trial, I confess I'm still not entirely sure where I stand. But it seems to me that I should state what fact I do know as clearly and honestly as possible. Da da da. Interesting. Mm. Yes. Because I will still wreck your ass without that evidence. <laughs> this is not altogether pleasing, fella. I'm still feeling telling the truth, Mr. McGrew. Well, don't forget that you're supposed to be representing my best interest here, lad. This guy's treading me right now. And now, now, it's, now it's the time is like this. Like, no, I'm, I'm defenders. I don't have any crime on me. I'm like, ah, it's fine. <laughs> no, that. A fella's memory is a curious thing, and not altogether reliable. Not the court must consider the fact. That the chubby hole under the seat is as empty as the devil's heart, so it is. Don't you think perhaps it would be in your best interest now to admit that you might have been mistaken? Do I have to choose again? Why? Why do I feel like something's not right here? Hmm. I should like the jury to weigh in on this matter, I think. Dot, dot, dot. That compartment is designed to hold equipment used to maintain the smooth riding of the carriage. Oh shit, someone's calling me. Give me a second. Okay. The guild's rules state that only buses should be properly and fully equipped at the time, at all times. So it certainly wouldn't have been empty on the night in question. Bebo isn't that irresponsible. Even though he charges people with more, <laughs> that money lending fleeciers and the pig purse are lying. Okay. It changes so quickly. <laughs> ah. I couldn't believe I was nearly taken in. The stinking rich are always stinkers. Nothing but covers the lot of them. What? Oh no. It's a trick, of course. It's a trick. Quite so. I must concur here. Damn, everyone's voting him like guilty now? The fuck? Please don't be everyone. We've come calculated reasoning one rapidly at the truth every time. <laughs> Oh, well, God damn it! Yes, but every time a different truth is seen, <laughs> yeah, she changes side real quick. She changes side real quick. My lord, I humbly exhibit the skills of justice. Clearly, a verdict of a not guilty at this time would be wholly inappropriate. Thank you, console. But before we proceed any further, there is the matter of the outstanding cross-examination. 
Okay. Council of the Defense, begin your questioning of the wingless, please. Yes, my lord. What just happened? The whole balance of the trial just shifted, almost beyond recognition. The Ripper of the Bailey is at work, it would seem. What the girls saw are. So, you were already in the Omnibus before you even set off on this run. Well, yeah, I mean, what's the point of spending a joy to make a few boat, huh? That's a wrong idea, ain't it? I suppose you meant there's no point spending money to make money. Exactly, exactly makes sense. Okay, yeah, true. <laughs> I guess I don't understand at all. Thanks, thanks for the explanation. Holy shit. Also, may I remind you that this girl is a PD thief. Kindly refrain from entertaining her tenants. Well, that does clear up the little mystery of the fares and all. Four paying passengers at five pence a piece, making twenty to which. The cabman testified. It should be 25, but okay, yeah, it's 20. It makes sense now because this girl just got up there because she <sighs> snuck in there. Let's just put it that way. And one little scrap girl is riding for free. The red chunk of a driver always goes for some grub before its last run, see? So that's when I slip into the carriage and get myself hidden under the seat. Nice and easy, right? But your hiding place is a storage compartment. Full of equipment for the couch, no? Yeah. There's brushes and buckets and whatnot in there, sure. I always chuck all that out and cram into it. Uh, cram it in, in a corner somewhere. No one ever seemed to bother much. And yet, according to the report filled by the police officers who first arrived at the scene. The compartment was full of such paraphernalia. Well, I don't know nothing about that. Like I said, I moved all that stuff out so I could right under the seat, that's all I can tell you. It seems we have reached the end of that line of inquiry, continue. Okay. But it was right all waste of time. A waste of time? Why is that? Well, most times I'm on my own in the God permit at least some of the time. I, I beg your pardon, did you say God permit? Oh yeah, well that's what I ki my kind call it. You say you did say the omnibus, I suppose. The point is, any normal run the carriage ain't got no one in it for a while, and that's when you come out of your hiding place and get away. That's it. Only that night. This cove was set on me seat, me seat from the start, and it didn't budge the whole way, did me. No one, no one each. I was totally stuck. Do you mean to tell us that you were present in the carriage for the duration? You were under the seat the entire time while events unfold in the enclosed cabin. Yeah. Right, Mister. To be sure, to be sure, I was as shocked as anyone. You don't expect to leave the cushion you have been sat on and find a child now, do you? Hmm. So this Miss Lestrade couldn't possibly be the culprit then. Okay. I tell you, you couldn't see a blind thing in that hiding place, this pitch in there. So you couldn't see out into the cabin at all. Not a jolt. Most days I push the cushion up with me that and look out the crack. Then I can have a butcher at who I'm gonna feed. I thought you were a pickpocket, not a butcher. 
I mean, I can have a look. The seat I get under ain't as plush as the other ones, you see. So most of the time, the passengers plan themselves opposite. But for some reason, that night, this uh, Irishman spent the whole journey right over my head. And for that reason, you weren't able to push the cushion up to pick out, I see. Truth is, I ain't too happy in small dark places. Feel too much like being thrown in the click. But, in the own, but it's the only place to hide in them, carriage. So it's Opson's choice. Why does she, she just stick to picking people pockets in the open then? I did say there's some reason that she's not letting on, judging from her demeanor. Demeanor. So anyways, I was a bit scared but I had to just stick it out under there, nothing else for it. Then after a while, I heard this loud bang, nearly jump out my skin, I did, and the scream just came out. When you said a loud bang, do you mean the noise of someone falling to the floor? Could I have been, I suppose. I, I don't remember so well. Point is, it made me jump. And you let out a scream involuntarily? That's right. And then I felt the cushion over my head get lighter all of a sudden. Presumably when the defense got up in order to help the victim, yes? Or not. It could equal, equally have been the moment the accused stood in order to stab his victim, could it not? Well, girl, did you see what happened at that crucial moment? Yeah, I saw it. I pushed up the cushion and a, a quick butcher... Had a quick butcher while I had the chance, didn't I? The Irishman was sitting up the bloke who had fallen on the floor on the seat opposite. That matches Mr. McGrath's account, of course. But then, the fella suddenly turns around and looks right at me. I snuck back down again, but it was too late by then. I should never have risked looking. And when Mr. McGirt discovered you, he pulled you out from your hiding place? I was scared stiff. I was a drag me out and set me down on the seat and all. Next to the victim, Mr. Mason. Yeah, the bloke had a knife in his gut and was bleeding. <coughs> then the carriage lurched a bit and he ended up falling onto me. Oh, how awful. Both me and God covered in blood. It made me sick as a dog. Both her hands covered in blood. That must be what the rooftop passenger saw. After that, I believe you talked with Mr. McGirl for a while, is that correct? He asked me some stuff. Wanted to know my name and what I was up to and that. Then I heard something from up above. Someone screamed. Yes, Mr. First on the first deck who won, who presumed. Well, I didn't want no one seeing my face, so I didn't look up. Then the horses were drawn up, smashed this, smashed this. And this here Irishman said to me, Get back under the seat. I will see that you can get away later. Hmm. All six members of the jury had decided the defendants was innocent. For one brief shining moment, yes. It's clear that they all are still, are still very unsure. If you could just find some conclusive piece of evidence among this new testimony, I'm sure we will clinch the verdict we want. Yes, I think you're right. And I have this niggling feeling. Something bothering me, but I just can't quite put my finger on it. Okay. Let's just check the... I, I don't have anything. <laughs> I don't have anything. <laughs> Uh, I don't have anything. Um, so, 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 so. Let's check the evidence we have again. Uh, 
I remember it's just gonna miss the first name, but that's that's all to it. Let's just see. Let's just check again, just to make sure there's just maybe there's something new. Okay. Can't seem to find anything out of place. I remember we opened this up. Remember looking at this as well. Let's check the omnibus again. No, I is there anything I could find in the omnibus though? I don't think there's anything else I could find in the omnibus. Let's just check it again, to be honest. Let's just check it again. Well, let's open the door and go inside shop. Yeah, it's seen number. It's horrible. It's horrible. Oh, there's a blood on the floor, okay. Okay, I haven't checked the blood on the floor then. That's blood, isn't it? Is something wrong? Oh, it's just... Well, this blood stain is so obvious, that's all. And yet, Van Zek have made, has made no mention of it. I suppose that seems a little strange. Why do I have such a bad feeling about this? Okay. I remember last time we didn't have saw any blood though. Remember last time I didn't saw any blood. Maybe this is something added. Wait, the color of the blood doesn't look right. Yeah, the color of the blood doesn't look right. And the briefcase is gone, right? So probably it's the color of the blood. This is a fresh blood and this like old blood. Say the victim obviously. Yes, that's and that's it will play clearly visible from the roof deck. Would you really step someone in full view of other passengers like that? I wonder. Well, it was after dark. Lamp over here, so perhaps a couple couldn't see anything outside through the skylight. Wait, wait, doesn't seem like it was a planned attack. Okay. Okay. Okay, everything else is the same. It's quite a large skylight, isn't it? Yes, quite large enough to offer a good view into the cabin from the roof deck. And there doesn't seem to be a hand or catch of any description. So I suppose it can be open from the inside of the cabin at least. Okay. 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 Um Okay, I think I think that I blood is added, I guess. I'm guessing, I'm guessing right now. Kazuma Asogi, yeah, that's the name. Let's not check that first.
For some reason, this here Iris Man spent the whole journey right over me head. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Why is he laughing this time? Okay, okay, something's new, something new. Is something wrong, Mr. McGrew? Yeah, he's laughing now. Okay, okay, what's, what's new, what's new? What's, oh, I do apologize. Was there something the matter, console? I'm just wondering if Miss Trade's last comment made something to occur to you, perhaps. You seem to be thinking something to yourself. Oh, no, no. There was nothing important. I was feeling bad for the poor lads, is all. I remember feeling desperate myself as a young lad stuck up in a dark dark. That was terrifying, so it was. I see, yes, I'm sure we all we can all sympathize. I'm still scared of the dark now. <laughs> I'm still scared of the dark now. Hey. And I don't know about yourself. But I find that the darkness seems to make everything you hear seems that much louder as well. Yeah, I I suppose it does, maybe. Miss Latrade, did you hear something that night? Anything that an unusual sound noise, perhaps? Da -da -da. Nah, not really. All I could hear was the Irish man snoring. But Jabbers, there's no need to tell the whole world of me, Fables, you little scamp. What a pity. If only Miss Latrade had heard something, it might have given us a wider new clue. Yes. What should we make of that last statement of hers? She seems like... She seems like she's hiding something. She said maybe. Profoundly important. My lord. I believe the statement just made by the witness is profoundly important. Profoundly important? But but all she said was that she heard nothing. Yes, which is the profound important point. I am almost sure of it. <laughs> she said maybe. Hmm. I'm almost sure that I don't understand the inner workings of your Eastern mind concern. Nevertheless. Miss Gan Illustrate, you will supplement your former testimony by repeating the last statement, please. What? Supplement? What are you on about? Don't give me all your fancy talk, I know what you're trying to do, well it won't work on me. That's right, insult the judge, always a good move. <laughs> okay, maybe, okay, okay, we can do this, we can get more information then. So we were starting, straining to hear what was happening the entire time, since the moment you hit yourself. Um, not exactly, no. Sorry? Well, there was no one in the cabin to start with. I could just push the cushion up and have a butcher to see what was what. But then, when I saw this world getting on, I got me head down so he didn't notice me. And Mr. McGirl sat on the seat under which you were hiding, correct? Okay, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, would you Adam and Eve it? Eh, what a knock, mug. So then all I could... S <laughs> I could do was listen. I was waiting to jump out there as soon as I heard them leave, you see. But who, but would it? Not likely. Even though we stopped here and there, I never heard the door open. So I just had to stay put and listen to I'm driving is... Pete's the mark to market, snoring like an old dog he was. Da -da 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 -da. Hmm. Are there any conclusions we can draw from there? It seems. I wonder. It doesn't add up. Miss Lestrade, what you have just told the court is clearly at odds with the facts. At odds? Uh, are you sure, man? Absolutely. Because he probably could hear everything, right? It's just my my learned Nipponese 
friend is not as dual witted as I feared. So when Zick realized it too. It's fine, I just gotta talk this and so that I can get more information. <laughs> Console, I must insist that you bolster your claim with evidence or some complicit party's name at the very least. Yes, my lord. I expect you to demonstrate this alleged contradiction to the court. According to Miss Lestrade, while she was heading in an omnibus that night, she heard nothing but the sound of Mr. McGrew snoring, but think, Ruinusuke, think. There's something else she would ha should have heard. Oh, 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 wait. Maybe she, she should have heard the guy because he got stabbed. He, he won't be like... He couldn't have heard anything, right? Show a, PFM, show a person. I was just choose to show a person. Very well, my lord. Allow me to elaborate. On a particular sound that Miss Latrake could not have failed to heard on the night in question. The sound was exactly, it was very clearly explained by the presence of the foreign person. I mean, I just gotta like, try this. I'm not too sure. I just gotta try this. It's this guy. It's gonna hurt him. Tries fire Mason? Yes, my lord. The sound that Miss Latrake cannot have failed to hurt is that of the victim, Mr. Mason, boarding the omnibus. Oh, okay, 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 <laughs> okay. Order, order, explain your reasoning, console. Miss Latre, allow me to confirm something. You claimed earlier that you were the first person on board the omnibus, is that correct? Yeah, cause I was. I got on while the driver was in the pub, didn't I? And the next person to board the omnibus was Mr. McGrew. That is was not a soul was in the cabin when I climbed aboard. At least, not in plain sight. So you were, into, to all intents and purposes, alone in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus at, th at that time? Did I not just say as much? I wasn't traveling with anyone else, if that's what you mean. Yeah, I saw him guard on, remember? Through the crack under the seat cushion. That was on its own, for sure. And from what we have heard, the carriage made a number of stops after that on its onwards journey. During which time did you not hear the door opening or closing at all? No, I never heard it. That's exactly what I was listening for, weren't I? I'm waiting for this world to leave. In which case, when and how did the victim end up in a carriage? We know that the victim collapsed inside the enclosed cabin of the omnibus, therefore, Miss Lestrade's statements about what she did or did not hear is at odd with the facts. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> yes, this PD thief's statements was clearly flawed. No, Ben Jack? Yes, he knew. He knew all too well that there was an inconsistency in Miss Trace's statement. I'm not sure, man. <laughs> he just keep laughing now. It would seem the words of thanks are in order for my learned friend. What are you talking about? You have demonstrated matters impeccably. Impeccably? This weakness and her colorful statements <laughs> are entirely unreliable. Her words are convenient, untruth, and nothing more. Is that right? How would how could the victim possibly not I bought the courage. It didn't make no sense whatsoever. And this girl is a pickpocket. Let not forget that. Oh, the granny as well? No! <laughs> I thought my job was the defense, but... Uh, is to find the truth. Fuck it. Uh, she didn't even say anything. Oh, the granny. I didn't want to judge the dear little meat just because she had some rather naughty ways. But I must say... I can't abide liars, and neither can I, Mr. Mr. Foreman. I didn't want to judge the girl just because she has some less than salubrious ways, but I must say, I cannot abide liars. A bit liars. Ah, Mr. Naruhodo, that's five jury members leaning towards guilty. I just help him do his job. God damn it! 
God fucking damn it. Well, your consideration for others is refreshing, my Nipponese friend. To the considerable troubles you have spared me. Yeah, why aren't he talking about anything, like objection or something? Yes, yeah, very refreshing. Oh. God damn it. God damn it. Uh, what are you playing at? Have you forgotten who you're working for, you useless as Eastern Amadon? This carnage is perfect. <laughs> Juro number two is the only one left. Mr. Narahodo, the way this is going, I know. If we can find some new ways to convince everyone of Mr. McGrill's innocence, the judge will rule and we will have loss. I very much wanted to believe the words of one the words of one of London's most respected gentlemen, but those of us in service know we must accept hard truth. Give me a second. Yes, the witness's last statement seemed to have revealed a critical inconsistency in her story. However, if we consider the possibility that her statement is in fact the truth, it may shed an entirely new light on this whole case. What are you saying? Da -da -da. Console? <laughs> I'm not gonna work for you, I'm not working for you now, my dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Whatever do you mean? Console, I will not tolerate your attempting to porridge my adjudication. Explain yourself at once. Da -da -da. When the accused board the omnibus on the night in question, the victim was nowhere to be seen. Subsequently, the carriage door was not heard opening a single time, as testified by the witness in the stand. And yet, the victim's body was found inside the carriage. If this PDT's words are to believe, how do you explain the victim's mirac miraculous appearance inside the cabin of the omnibus? The skylight, skylight, the skylight, the skylight can be opened from the outside. There's only one way to explain how the victim came to be inside the carriage. There was another entrance. It was put there after he's dead. Oh, I could. That, I think that one is the right answer, I think. The only explain is that the victim entered the enclosed cabin some other way. I wonder what new fantasy you will come up with in your blind panic. Yeah, behold, the omnibus here is for all to see. Okay, only one side of the enclosed cabin is furnished with a door. The other has only windows. Fixed windows which cannot possibly open in short. There is no entrance to the cabin other than a door. The skylight. But there could be. There's no one possibility you haven't considered. Oh really? Yes. One other way inside that isn't a door. Another opening, the use of which allowed the victim to appear inside the enclosed cabin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, console. The defense will identify the location for the court. Here in the omnibus in which the incident occurred. Where on earth is this entrance by which you propose the victims enter the cabin? This? This place? I would say. The answer is obvious. It can only have been the skylight. I say the skylight? Objection. Your ludicrous proposal almost had me lost of words. However, the skylight may well be large enough for someone to pass through. Objection. So you claim, but do you have sure evidence to support your abler brain theory? Both Mr. McGrew and Miss Strait said the same in their testimony. They each claimed to have heard a loud thump, such as the noise made by someone falling to the floor. Yes, which has already been explained. As the sound of the victim falling from his seat having been assaulted with the danger with the dagger, yeah. Yes, it has, but would a man slipping from the seat onto the floor really have made such a loud noise as the witnesses described? A noise loud enough to cause Miss Trade to let out 
an involuntary cry, in fact. Good, good gracious. Perhaps, in fact, that was the moment that the victim made his entrance into the cabin. No, let me rephrase that. The victim didn't enter the cabin as such. He fell into it. You are now suggesting that the victim fell from the skylight into the cabin? That's simply impossible. How can you be so sure? Because if the victim has fallen inside through the skylight as you say, the passenger on the roof deck would have seen it happen. Which is that too guy, and yet no one person make mention of such events, events in their testimony. Well, um, yes, that's true, but... Oh, he's gonna say something? Might a humble fella make a wee comment here? Mr. Mr. McGrill? Do you be sure now, the two fellas who were sat on the floor that testified before said nothing of the victim falling through the skylight. But it seems to me, Miss my lord, that this not as so much a case of them not saying, but... Maybe they lie? Eh? Hey. This a case of them being unable to say. What? I think perhaps the two fellas do be having something of a compelling reason not to mention what happened. Would you not agree, fine lad, ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Hmm? My goodness, surely not. Those two champs on the floor? On the roof? It's a skip typing, you mean the ones stuck that knife in the man were... Oh? Nani? My god. <laughs> I was my god. Oh, this guy- oh, these two guys show up so quickly, what the fuck? Just what exactly are you insinuating here, you you blitterot? Ladies first, you rotter, he said you rotter. What are you insinuating? Fair play, this is a flaming outrage. I have a good mind to give you a blinker in a minute. Kuranaka horse, what the hell? He'll give you a shiner in a, mom in a minute, he said. And so will I. Mr. Fair Play. You're effectively accusing me, a city gentleman and well-respected banker. And me, a very, very angry header. <laughs> that doesn't do anything, man. So I just think that someone like me could have stabbed that man in the guts. It's, it's, it's a disgrace. It's a scandal. It's... I protest. I protest in the strongest possible terms. That's right. I protest too. About you, you rotten scrunder. Order, order, order. This is not the time, weaknesses. I will not permit this wanton invasion of the stand. Return to the afternoon after and return to the enter room at once. But but this is beyond reasoning, my lord. Oh, it's outrageous. There's two animals, man. <laughs> it, it's very hurtful, you know. My lord, if I may comment. Go ahead, Lord Vanzak. It was the defense that insit insit this outburst from the weaknesses. My learned friend has seen fit to abandon all protocols and accuse the weaknesses without proof. Uh, accuse? I, I never intended to. It seems young Nipponese that your command of the English tongue is one thing. You propose to this court that have that the victim fell through the skyline from the roof deck of the omnibus. That hypothesis hypothesis cannot possibly stand without the rooftop passenger being aware of the event. You have branded You have branded this gentleman li liars. You have intimidated their criminal guilt. In our British court of law, that is what it Term a baseless accusation. I know I was rushed to put this idea forward without any actual evidence, but you can't just dismiss it without a second thought. What are we wasting time for? Get them to uh, testify. I thought there was something fishy about that. That from the moment I lay eyes on the fellow, we have to see this matter through now, one way or another. If there's filth and rubbish in our midst, we must dispose of it at once. 
Testify. 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 This is. I thought. Oh, oh, I thought it was a courtroom. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Testify. What? What's happening, there, Mr. Naruto? Testify. Where's the? Where's the fork? Where's the pick? 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 Pitch fork, guy. The spectator in the public gallery. Uh, they are in a complete frenzy. Order, order, order. <laughs> Mr. Fairplay and Mr. First. Um, my lord, you you will take the stand again and make another formal testimony in reference to the indictment brought by the defense. Um, y yes, my lord. I I didn't come here for this. There's no time to think this through. All I can do is keep being pushing forward. Okay, let's just hear what they're gonna say, refuting the accusation. We were the only two person up on the floor, roof deck, dead or alive, I can swear to that. If anything had happened where we were sitting, don't you think one of the other us would have noticed? In any case, neither of us know the first thing about the victim. We have no reason to kill the man. Okay. The skyline, skylight was shut the entire time. I tell you, we couldn't possibly have opened it. If you're so sure the victim fell through the skylight, where's your proof? Hmm. I must say that on listening to this testimony, it is somewhat hard to imagine. How either witnesses could have performed any malevolent act on this open rooftop deck without the order without the other noticing forthwith. That's right, you see. We're innocent, I tell you. Although logically, of course the argument fall down if the two of you were in conclusion with one another. What? Eh? According to investigation by Scotland Yard, Scotland Yard, again, the two witnesses share no common dealings. Ha, huh, well, I don't trust coppers any more than I trust the stinking rich. Something doesn't feel right here. The trial is going in our favor, really. So why do I feel so uneasy? Counsel for the defense, over to you, your cross-examination, please. Oh, yes, my lord. Okay, okay, we got new stuff. We got new stuff now. So at no time did the victim Mr. Mason climb up to join you on the roof deck? Absolutely not, Dickon. No question about it, he said. None at all. Oh, but yes, of course, I, I remember seeing them both. I saw the victim inside the enclosed cabin talking with this man here. Is this true, Mr. McGrill? Dear me, my lord, at the risk of repeating myself, I boarded the omnibus alone and nodded off inside almost immediately. That's outright lie. Without doubt, you were engaged in... Let me stop you there, fellow, and ask, do you have any evidence at all? At all? Oh. This is all about evidence in the court these days, so it's is you do did do well to remember that. I saw you with my own eyes. This is going so well. <laughs> <laughs> if anything happened, yeah. Well, it was on the final run of the omnibus at past ten o'clock in the evening. I would certainly have been quite. It would certainly have have been quite dark. Perhaps too dark to be seen clearly. Yeah, true. Is this some kind of a lock? Is this some kind of a joke? He said. Is that what this is? Or perhaps one or the other of you fell asleep uh, briefly. Are you fair dinkum, sir? Are you serious, sir? That's what he said. It's impossible, I tell you. I did give you the key to the vault if you could fall asleep in the in that bitter cold. And if you did manage it, your eyes lit would freeze shut and you would did never open them again. That's extreme. <laughs> 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 
It was extreme, I tell you, and we had to put it put away because this man had locked the door. Any true gent would have unlocked it and let me in when I knocked. I am dreadfully sorry about that, young fellow. But you see, I was away with the fairies and I didn't hear you at all. That's a lie, I saw you through the glass. You were talking to someone. Now, now. There was a cold night, so it was. People do be seeing things that aren't real in the cold. This hardly surprising. Surprising. Seeing things, seeing things? This guy is like very hot headed, holy shit. I believe we have reached an impasse here on this particular point. Uh, you, you, you. Don't take it personally now, lad. If I am if I am a suspect in this case, then it's only fair that you and the other Finn are too. Open and free competition is what a capitalist society is all about. This isn't a competition I should like to be involved in, really. So, you had never met Mr. Trice Fire Mason before? Or loved? No, not once, never. He never met the man before, he said never. And you, Mr. First, has no prior dealings with the victim either? That's right, sir. Hey, headers don't have much to do with breed must makers, to be perfectly honest, sir. No, I imagine not. You see? How many different ways can I put this? Not over of has the remotest connection to the gentleman who were inside the cabin. Hey, that's 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 yeah, give me more give me more information, my dude. <laughs> Mr. McGrew? Yes, console. What can I be doing you for? Did the witness's last statement give you a pause of, for thoughts somehow? Da -da -da. Not the remote's connection. Is that right now, I wonder. What are you insinuating now? Ah, Mr. Fairplay. That's been too long, so he has. Hey. If I am not very much mistaken, I believe this fast approaching, is it not? Your repayment date? I, I beg your pardon? <laughs> you borrowed 20 guineas from me, sir. And at an unconscionable rate of interest, you tricked me. It's, it's extortion. Well now, is that a touch of burglary? Is it? The sort of burglary that might motivate a fella to pass his crime off on another. Okay. Yeah, true, true. And young Mr. First. Me, sir, what do you want with me, sir? You be making hats for a living, do you not? That's their top hat sliding above your on your head. Is that one of your own creation, is it? Oh, well, um, I'm still just an apprentice, you understand? Okay. I'm learning to find the perfect fit for whatever fine gent walks through the door. Uh, the perfect fit, is it? Well, this a very distinctive design, so it is. Many customers like it, I tell you. They like a distinctive touch. Customers. Such as Troy's Fire Mason? Oh. There was a photographic print of the victim submitting submitted as evidence before, my lord. Okay. Oh, that head! Okay. Oh. Ah, oh, this, you mean. Yeah, it's a distinctive design, I guess. Yeah, I can't help thinking that the poor fella has looked distinctly distinctly familiar, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um... Oh. That's... that's one of my hats. Uh, hey, that it is. So... It will seem the brick maker was a customer of yours. The sort of customer I did wager you could have had a V coral with over the distinctiveness of the goods. Oh no, sir. Absolute, ab absolutely not, sir. Well, there's really nothing more to add. It wouldn't be right to say that the two fellows here haven't the 
having the remotest connection to the victim, you see. I rest my case. Okay. You little weasel. Oh my god, he's too he's still eating on his 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 his, 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 his stuff. He's better than at this I than I am. Gosh, Mr. McGurr had certainly been true uh, true in his riches, haven't he? Da -da -da. Please, don't let me little interruption hold up the proceeding. The skylight was shut the entire time, I tell you. We can possibly have opened it. Are you quite certain about that? That the skylight was shut the entire time? I'm going to lose my block with you in a minute. He's going to lose his rag with you in a minute. That's what he said. Take a look for yourself, go on. You see, it's shut fast now, just like it was on the night. So it is, of course. A fella the size of Mason could likely break right through it. Still an L. What? Just looking at the size of the thing, you understand? Uh, now you hold on there a minute, sir. The size of the thing means nothing. Not on its own. Let's consider the bigger picture here, shall we? Let's stop biting our crane, shall we? <laughs> I would, uh, yeah, I'm like, how long you gotta buy his cane for? The fuck? Um, I, I was riding the omnibus on another occasion when, um, well, I broke wind loudly. I, I shocked myself with it as it happens. What? This, this unexpected. The confession, Mr. Fush? Oh, I, I just meant to say, well, the point is, I tried to open the skylight, you see. But, just my luck, I couldn't make it budge. The stance was terrible. Everyone was looking dagger at me, sir. I went as red as I rolled, I did. He just couldn't open from the inside, that's all. Are you expecting me to sentence you? <laughs> oh, no, sir. The, the, point, the point is, the skylight cannot be open. I tried and tried when I was inside that cabin of shame. Excuse me. Do you have something to say about that, Miss Lestrade? Miss Lestrade. It opens. Hmm? The skylight. That is what we are talking about, right? I gotta shoot me? What the fuck? No, come on. What? Just, 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 what the? Okay. One of them skylight opens that easy. More easily than you can load that weapon. <laughs> That's a lie, I tell you. Otherwise, when I broke wind, I, I. You can't do it from the inside, you, Mark. Oh. Look, a few weeks ago, I was up on the roof deck of one of the drags, and I. Had a great hold. I mean, I had pearls coming out me ears. Let me let's try. This is not the forum to be a eulogizing on the subject of your cri criminal activities. <laughs> well, anyway, I had a bit of a scare when I lifted the last Brooks purse. He got wise to me. All four of them surround me, so I couldn't top off the bus and leg it. So what I did was I used the skylight, opened the catch and jumped right through. What? Yeah, the catch for them skylights is on the top side. That's why you can open them from the cabin. The skylight opens from the roof deck? Bailiff! Jump up onto the roof of the omnibus at once and verify the witness claim. Yeah, it is open from the outside. Yeah, I saw that as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my hat. See? She, she, she is saying all her crimes now. <laughs> all her thief activities, goddammit. Order, order, order. So it happens that this street girl's statement is quite true. I don't believe it. The skylight opens. And from the roof deck. Mr. Naruhodo. This could be the clue we've been looking for. Well, counsel for the defenses. Defense, please continue with the cross examination. Yes, my lord. So the skylight opens. Perhaps I should investigate for.
all myself. I have to investigate again? Okay, let's just... Let's just examine it then. Okay. This guy was first and shot before, but now the catch has been undone. We should be able to open it. Okay. Let's just look up. Yeah. Anything I can do here? No. No, there's nothing I can look. Oh, there's a blood here. There's blood here. Oh, there's blood on the skylight. Yes, it does open very wide, doesn't it? Wide enough to kick someone like you through. Certainly, Mr. Naruto. Why someone like me? <laughs> Don't do the takedown again. Ah. What, what is it? Look. He's just here. Look at this. That, that's without questioning. It's blood. Why would there be a blood stain there? Surely. It can be unrelated to the case, can it? The details of the only bus has been updated in the court record. The scene of the crime there is a blood stain visible on the frame of the skylight when it opens. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Nice, 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 nice. We are very close on solving it. Oh, sure, fell to the- where's your proof? I mean, I can do it now. <laughs> Here. Take this. Take this. Take this. On the night in question, the victim was fatally stabbed in the stomach. And immediately afterwards, the victim's body was pushed through the skylight into the cabin below. Those are the facts and the irrefutable proof remains clearly visible in the omnibus that stand before us today in this very courtroom. What? That's, that's Arthur Humbug. Oh, you can't possibly have any evidence. No, you can't. I, I mean, we didn't do it, I tell you. It's impossible. If we double proof here in this courtroom. Console, my lord. I believe everyone would appreciate a little clarification here. Hmm? Where exactly within the omnibus is this evidence to which you allude? You will point out what is it that proved the victim's fall from the roof deck through the skylight. It's the blood, it's the blood, where's the blood at? Okay, that's the blood, there. Oh, I examine I, I again? That's the one. By Jupiter. Is is that? Blood? Yes, there's blood. There's blood and suck on these bleeds. Uh, this blood stain proved two things. Firstly, when an incident occurred, the skylight of the omnibus was open. What? And secondly, the victim was already bleeding when he fell through the opening. Oh my. Oh my. And so it follows that Mr. McGill, who was inside the enclosed cabin himself at the time, cannot possibly be guilty of this crime. Oh, first, this first made a fair play, you got fucked. No! Yeah, no! Now, give us the truth! Order, order, order. Oh, but, 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 <laughs> but, uh, the blood could have sprayed up there when the fellow was stabbed inside the cabin. And only found its way to that one particular spot on the skylight? Sure, and that would be very convenient. Oh. And let's keep it in mind that the skylight catch can only be unfastened from the roof deck. I myself wouldn't have been able to open it now, wouldn't I? But, 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 <laughs> there's no way to know for certain, is there? If the chance really fell through the skylight, I mean. Why don't you have a good look at the floor of the cabin between the two seats, Mr. Fuss? There's a blood stain. This all too plain, if you see. There's the aftermath 
that shows the poor fella drop from a far height right there. So it is. What? No. But, but it can't be. It's it's all lies. <laughs> My fellow jury members, I think we can all agree that this is clear proof of the defendant's innocent. Can we? I believe we can. Yes, sir. It's clear to me now where the filthy rubbish can be found in this courtroom. What? <laughs> That's what they all say, man. So they thought they could pull the wool over my eye, did they? Yeah, I mean, uh, what the fuck? You can save the stage. I won't tolerate any of the good carriage being solid with blood. I won't tolerate it. Oh, I always knew that nice gentleman who gave us the delightful park couldn't have done such a thing. On three, then everyone on two. Yeah, yeah, three. Objection. Oh, oh. Oh, when Jack with his wine and iron shield lake, what are you gonna do? A chilling performance, Mr. McGrew. Oh, and uh, what would you be referring to there now, Lord Venzek? Venzek? A bloodstain on the frame of the skyline? Such evidence is no and void. What? Why? For one extremely simple reason. Because it's wine. <laughs> that sewer of blood never existed. <laughs> oh shit! You planted the evidence, goddammit? How do you know? What are you talking about? It's there for all to see and it's clearly blood. Is this wine actually? <laughs> I personally attended Scotland Yard investigation of the omnibus. The officer involved went over the carriage with a fine tooth comb. So I can state with absolute surety. No such smell of blood exists in the carriage, at least not until this trial began. But are you are you suggesting, Lord Van Jack, that this stain of blood was fabricated, my lord? Yes. And while this court has been in season. What? Again? Hehe. <laughs> what a palaver. I must say I didn't expect such crude reasoning from a prosecutor. Prosecutor of you are standing, Lord Vanzek. But I'm Magnus McGrew, a fellow known all over the capital for his fine act contribution to the public life. I don't take kindly to slander, and I'll fight it to the bitter end. Even if it rolling off the tongue of the Ripper of the Bailey. If it's Mr. McGrew, I realize that this is your first appearance in court as the accused. However, I am well aware of your involvement behind the scene in a great many affairs of dubious nature. You are very adept when it comes to avoiding getting your hair on hands dirty. And each time it happens, that's a case you are involved in is investigated, you adapt the fact. Adapt the facts? What does that even mean? When you view a fortune the size of Mr. McGurk, however ill-gotten it may be, nothing is impossible. Tampering with evidence, manipulating the scene of the crime, bribing witnesses. I toss your ability to concord the most convenient of stories, sir. Tut -tut, Lord Van Zick, this will not do, to be sure. Wait now, console. Hmm? Oh, no. I think it's fair to say this does all sound like a rather far-fetched excuse by a desperate man. The blood on the skylight doesn't exist, you say. But if yours will all cast your mind back, is it not true that the omnibus there has been in the courtroom the entire time? How could anyone possibly have put a smear of blood in it without the world and his wife seeing? Isn't that right now, console? It's true. The only bus has been in full wheel the entire time that court has been in session. My learned friend. Here's to hearing your opinion on this matter, in your own words. As you wish. Could someone have tampered with the omnibus during this trial? If you are asking me, I think... It could have been possible with the smoke grenade, right? And I remember not seeing the blood on the 
on the floor. I remember not seeing the blood on the floor. I remember not seeing the blood on the floor because if it were on the floor, the blood was on the floor, I would surely check it out. But last time I didn't check it. So it could have possible could have been possible. It could have been possible, yeah. With a smoke grenade. I feel as though there's something even more important at stake here. Hmm. There's no evidence to suggest that the defendant did as my learned friend suggests. However, in terms of having the opportunity to carry out the alleged tampering, there is one possibility. Oh, good gracious. Explain yourself, console. It's the wine. I think in paper it's the wine. It might be him. Yes, there is. It seems my learned Japanese friend has no intention of running out from this deceit. Deceit? I'm sure everyone still remembers clearly the recess that we were forced to take. As a result of the smoke grenade fired by the witness currently in the stand, Miss Gina Lestrade. Yeah. Bang. Bang, bang, bang. What is going on? Be careful, Mr. Naruto. Cover your face. Bailiff. Yeah, secure the omnibus. <laughs> Call emergency recess. Clear the courtroom. The courtroom was filled with smoke, and everyone was thrown in confusion. Into a confusion, all of us were made to leave this chamber. Is that brief interval under the veil of smoke and in all the chaos? It could have been possible to steal inside. The omnibus is still inside the omnibus. And I'm pointing at him, that motherfucker! <laughs> With his motherfucking wine! <laughs> are you wise? What are you trying to pull, you... You rotten... Freckless... Gorger? Freckless? Freckless? Gorger? You're supposed to be defending me. This a wicked plot. This is a plot to undermine me, so it is. Whatever you think this is, it's changed nothing. The facts are the same. After this courtroom was evacuated earlier as a result of the smoke grenade, a number of inconsistency materialized in relation of to the omnibus. Inconsistency? Such as? To start with, the storage compartment underneath the rear passenger seat was empty, yes. When the police investigated the omnibus, this compartment was full of the driver's items. Secondly, we have the smear blood on the edge of the skylight. As I have said, there was no there was no pres that was not present at the start of the trial this morning. Hmm. Unfortunately, Law Van Zick. No one is able to con corroborate your claims. That's true. When the omnibus was first wheeled out, both the storage compartment and the skylight were shot. Accordingly, I'm afraid to say we cannot establish with any certainty if this evidence is the result of tampering or not. If this evidence is tampering or not. Okay. Indeed, my lord, no doubt there was not a single person who saw fit to verify such things. What do you think? Sorry? About the omnibus, is there anything else unusual about the omnibus? I have no idea. <laughs> if I'm honest, I don't really remember what I'm examining when I in that omnibus. I can't verify this either way. My lord, at this moment in time, the defense can oh can point out one other inconsistency. What? A mark that surely could not have been present at the start of the trial. What? Mr. Susato, what are you doing? I examined, I examined the omnibus with you, don't forget. There's something that seems out of place compared to how the carriage looked originally. Originally? That's what we needed to identify now. What in the devil's name are you going to say now? If it's you, if it... If you dare to betray me, you little maggot, you did better. Oh, okay. 
Silence McGirl Mc the court awaits the defense clarification. Girl. This trial keeps swinging one way and the end to the other. I have no idea what the truth and what deceptions. What am I supposed to believe here? I shall have to ask you to elaborate, Consul. Let's check it out again. I don't get it. What exactly is this alleged mark? Oh, mark that you, you claim appeared at some point during this trial. I think I don't know the already. I think the only thing left is the floor, the blood on the floor, I would say. <laughs> that's the only thing left. Yeah, I think that's the only thing left. If you consider that the victim fell through the skylight or to the floor of the cabin, you would certainly expect to find sight of blood where he landed. But as far as I recall, this blood stain on the cabin floor was not there when the omnibus was first brought into the courtroom. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, good, good lord. Oh, okay, thank god. I only have two trials left and I didn't fuck it up. Holy shit. <laughs> yes. I do believe you're correct, console. Da -da -da. Well said. Although, as a as advocate for the defense, one might say that was a very careless slip of the tongue. I believe that blood stain on the floor is a decisive piece of evidence. But if the question is whether that evidence is genuine or whether it was unlawfully fabricated by someone, I feel compelled to admit that there at least a possibility that the evidence is fake. Oh, okay. What the hell? <laughs> this trial is over. Mr. McGill. He got sent in, send in his people. Mafia. <laughs> Start shooting out of everyone. I've done everything I possibly can to cooperate with this court, but this is all over now. <laughs> uh, Start threatening. Start threatening. Eh? But, but you're the defendant. This is over, I tell ya. Oh, shit. What the fuck? <laughs> Memory, recollection, what people think they saw, this all a nonsense. Facts are what counts, and the fact is that blasting is there now. Damn, ah, well. And over the course of this desperate trial, long and extremely drawn out as it has been, that good for nothing ripple of the Bailey has failed to present any decisive, decisive evidence at all. I'm scandalous, so I am. I did talk better of Lord Venzek. Well, my lord. Da, da, da. I must concur with the defendant. The unaffirmed recollection of an individual cannot stand as evidence. At this moment in time, the particular bloodstain in question is very much in existence. And in the absence of any credible method by which to prove its alleged previously not existed existence i regret to say that it would be improper for this trial to continue your your lordship can be serious lord venzo what is your position we can can we lick the blood to find out whether is it uh fine or not <laughs> the prosecution my lord has no further weaknesses or evidence to pres present very well in that case as i believe we have explored every possible Animal a avenue in this matter. I shall proceed to my adjudication As a formal as a formality, I am of course obligated to confirm with the defense first What formal formality as things start as things stand at the moment it would seems that mr. McGregor will be found not guilty. Yes Which would means we are we have won. Is that really the right outcome here? Is it really alright for the trial to come to an end now, with all this unexplained inconsistency? 
Council for the Defense. Your closing statement, please. Yes, my lord. Defense belief. Oh my god. The defense is innocent. The defendant could be guilty. The defendant could be innocent. Okay. I don't know, man. I don't really trust the guy, man. I'm not too sure now. Um, The defendant could be guilty. But if I could be guilty, I have to find out what it happens. Okay, so... Okay, I would say... Hmm, I would say he could be guilty. Defendant could be guilty. We might... We will take this call for another hour. It's gonna be uh, two more hours. <laughs> I'm here in the courtroom today to advocate for the defense of my client, Mr. McGirl. However... At this moment in time, I cannot in all good conscience at least fully to the defendant's innocent. What are you saying, man? Mr. McGirl, you're fucked. <laughs> no one's really actually defending you. I'm sorry. Well, I wanna I wanna I wanna know the truth more than defending you, my my dude. <laughs> Without any question, there is no conclusive evidence to prove that the defendant is guilty. However, there is also no conclusive evidence to prove that he is innocent. Is innocent. Good. Good gracious me. Order, order. This this is unprecedented behavior, Consul. A defense lawyer calling the accused innocent into question. Are you of sound mind? I mean, I've been thrown into this trial. It's not like it's not. Like I wanted to be here, man. <laughs> The hell? What the fuck? God damn it! Oh, there was a grand decision to appoint you as my lawyer. So it was a grand decision. What? I must say, I didn't expect quite such an exciting spectacle at the end there. But still, here, have this for your troubles. Ah, oh, did he hit my eye again? Your job here is done, fella. And some fine work you have done, so here you have. What 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 do you mean? This just as the right honorable gentleman was so seemingly put it before. The trial can't go on anymore. And your closing statement there was how did he put it? No? Nothing more than a formality. I don't... Okay. Okay, it's laughing again. Okay. Okay. Why is it laughing again? Why? What's the problem here? <laughs> I, I really don't know what to make up of all of this. Was the evidence we've seen genuine or was it fake? His lordship was... Would be fuming. Any unsightly rubbish should be disposed of properly, as I said. The stinking witch are always guilty of something, you oh, mark my word. I feel terribly ashamed that I ever doubted that lovely man who gave us the lovely park. <laughs> the lovely park again, Granny, god damn it. He, he killed a man, it doesn't really matter with the lovely park, okay? Uh -oh. Now that proceeding has unfolded in this way. I'm compelled to declare a premature end to this trial. Furthermore, the court must accept the defendant's defense plea. So we walk off. I thank you kindly, my lord. I hereby pronounce the verdict of this court. But but we still haven't determined if the blood stain in the omnibus is genuine or not. We don't know if these witnesses are telling the truth or pack of lies. We have no idea about the truth. The Lord Van Zip. My lord. The case made by the prosecution was flawed, plain and simple. It's if indeed the omnibus present as evidence were temporary, the prosecution is at fault for allowing such a disgraceful perversion of justice to take place. Damn. It's his fault. My sincerely my sincere. Apologies, my lord. But wait. When we were evacuated from the courtroom, Lord Van Zyl ordered the evidence to be secured. 
I'm afraid the prosecution cannot sign responsibility in this matter. That's that's so unfair. The culpability of the defendant has not at the present time been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to pour for the judgment. What? Oh. Well, Lord Van Zilk, it's been a pleasure. So it has. And as for you, my dear fellow, I couldn't have asked for a better defense. Do you mean to tell me this has all been a grand waste of time? This the law of the land, my good man. If you'd like to pursue this matter further, you can always go ahead and try to change the law. Magnus McGrew. Oh, good grief. We have more to say to me, have you? Just one thing, a warning. Damn, the eyes, man. This is far from over. <laughs> ah, this is far from over. Well, something to be looking forward to then. I hereby pronounce the defendant, Magne Mr. Magnus McGrew. Not guilty. Yeah, well, I got to walk off them. We didn't know it. We couldn't know the truth and anything. He, that's, that's, what's this? Corrigan? That's even fireworks? What the fuck is this? <laughs> we didn't get to know the truth. What the fuck? I want to know the truth, man. More than anything else. What the fuck is this? This outrage. Oh, fuck me. I've been, I mean, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been listening to the, to the, to the things, testimony, I've been listening, I've been looking at the evidence. It's just such a waste to not knowing what happened, man. With the courtroom in the pandemonium for the second line, second time that day, the judge delivered his verdict. And my first ever trial in Great Britain came to an abrupt end. With the defendant being found not guilty. Ostensibly a victory for us. Fucking hell, dude. My god, I wanna know what happened, man. But shit, <laughs> this, this piece of shit. <laughs> that certainly was a long trial. Yeah, it's a waste of fucking time. <laughs> We, we did win, but, but, yeah. Ah, yes, it was. Your first ever trial on Foreign Soul and your first victory. It was a wonderful performance. Yeah, we, we, we beat, we beat the, 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 the Reaper from Braille, Braille, Braille. Yeah, yeah. My heartfelt congratulations. And to you, Mr. Sato. Thank you for your assistance. I, I suppose we should be happy. Oh, uh, well. The trouble is, we're still completely in the dark about what actually happened. Well, we didn't have enough time. But isn't it wrong? I mean, who was actually responsible for Mr. Mason's death? We don't even know that. The sole aim of the defense is to obtain a verdict that exonerates the defendants. You carry out your duty to perfection. Hey, that you did. It's him again. Mr. McGirl? Girl that? Girl that? Ah, oh, and that girl is with him too. Ah, oh, where well, it seems the stories are true. Oh, what stories? About the six enormous fireworks they do be letting out when there's a worthy of not guilty. <laughs> yeah, like what? Why? <laughs> Why? Why is there a firework? I'm sure you must have seen them now. Spectacular, when do you say? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I definitely, I did heard it was a sight to behold, and to be sure, it was. And I have you to thank, I suppose, for having opportunities to see it. Oh, I don't know about that. I'm not sure I really did anything. What on earth are you saying, fellow? How did you walk out of there a free man? How did I walk out of there a free man again? I didn't think it was so much thanks to me as down to your planning. You're a straight talking fellow, aren't you? I must say. You had me astray in a head there once or twice. But you're young and headstrong. 
Wahaha. And it's water under the bridge. Fuck yeah. Congratulations, Mr. McGur, on having your name cleared. But nothing res nothing's resolved. There's only one thing that matters to me. Oh? Hey. They all seen that I didn't do that obvious and absurd that deed. This grand, is it not? I suppose it is. Now the fine fellas of Scotland Yard can take matter in hand and sort out any weird details. They'll see it for what it is. They'll get to the truth. I have absolute faith in them, so I have, after all. I do be providing a good number of their wages with all the taxes I pay. <laughs> rich, it's rich, it's not that funny. <laughs> so then. As we agreed beforehand, 1000 greenies for your progress, fellow. Oh, oh no no, I couldn't possibly accept that much. Ara, boys, you are a humble person, are you? You're from the east? Well, if you insist. But have this still and all, you deserve a reward. Mr. Magnus McGrude, bailiff. Everything is ready, sir. If you'd like to follow me into the courtroom. Into the courtroom? What's this, officer? This sooner than I was led to believe. I hope it's not inconvenient, sir. There were some changes to the schedule. Well, I must be making tracks now. This time for the inspections. Sorry? What's inspections? They are going to examine the omnibus again, so I am told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. They are going to examine it again? Now? Naturally, I am under no obligation to take part in any more of this matter now. But as an upstanding member of London society, I do be doing my best to help where I can. This is a gentleman's duty, so it is. So then farewell, the well, there was an absolute pleasure meeting you. I hope you have a well of a time while you are studying here in Great Britain. And there he goes, a free man. Yup. Oh, I forgot she was here too. Oh, she gotta shoot me? What the hell? Why is she reloading the smoke gun again? Don't move. Whereas I want to say get a move on. She really does took forever to load that thing. <laughs> Miss Lestrade, would you mind putting that thing down? You're a grown up. Sorry. And I hate all gro I hate all grown ups. Okay. Alright, there you are. What's this? Naughty, naughty, running off like that. Is this some kind of picnic? Who is this little girl? <laughs> the gadgets should vary. Look like the gadgets for shrooms. Uh. Sherlock Ho shrooms. Herlock, Herlock shrooms. And taking that with you as well. I was looking forward to the trial run of my experiment. The smoke grenade launcher. Ha! Huh. Damn. What? Oh, do you want to play? You won't beat me. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> um, excuse me, but who are you? Oh, good day to you. I'm, um, well, the inventor, I suppose, of that machine. The inventor? Well, normal smoke grenades are so dull, don't you agree? White, white, and more white. <laughs> we have to be short in smoke. It could at least be a pretty color, I thought to myself. Do we have to be shrouded in smoke still? At all? <laughs> I just took my eyes off it for a moment while I was changing on to a bat a different omnibus and she pinched it. Oh she was in the omnibus. Luckily I fitted in with a telegraphic beacon. A tele was it what? I have no idea what this girl is talking about. Anyway, you're coming with me now. Back to my laboratory. What what for? To apologize, of course, silly. To my technician. What? You mean say sorry? You must say sorry when you have done something wrong. Surely an adult has told you that before. An adult? Hmm. I don't listen to no adults. Come along then. Follow me. Fine. Have it your way. 
Oh good, you see. I knew you want to, you did want to do the right thing in the end. I'm very sure that what she wants is not to get shot by that massive gun of yours. <laughs> she was threatened. <laughs> she was threatened. Definitely. Definitely. We'll be leaving now then. Bye bye. But she said she was on the omnibus. Shouldn't we stop her? I'm so sorry for all the views. Do we stop her? She was a lively one. Should we stop her? Okay, never mind. I guess. Well, do you think perhaps we ought to be on our way now? Too? Yes, you're right. But where to? Oh, we haven't had time to find a place to stay. No sooner have we arrived in London than we have to rush here. All our travel king cases are still with the bailiff. Hmm. I was originally planning to spend today in search of lodging, but at this late hours in the day, I'm afraid we may be out of luck. Don't worry though, I have a plan. If the worst come to worst, I heard of a lovely park where we could spend the night is the Mr. McGirt Place Park. Please tell me you're not thinking of McGirt Park. I know it may be a little chilly at this time of year, but our youthfulness will see us sure. <laughs> No, god damn it. I'm not so sure about that. I think a mid-winter London night will freeze a young person solid just as easily as an elderly one. Oh dear. That doesn't sound agreeable. Now I'm starting to regret turning Mr. McGill down. That 1000 greenies would have paid for a lovely warm room or mansion. <laughs> and so. The trial to be determined to determine my worthiness for the study tour was over by the end of our first day in London. However, as we were certain to learn, there were more trying times ahead. Just as the Reaper of the Bailey had won, the case was far from over. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. What's happening now? Oh shit, oh it's on fire now? What the fuck? What? Water! Where's the water at? Where's the water at? No one was supposed to be allowed in here before we started investigating. Oh no, someone's locked in? Holy shit! It's Mr. McGill? Shit, in the courtroom as well. Holy fuck. The boss of this guy, man. Holy shit. The end. But who was in a... In a... In a car... In a carriage. Damn. Okay, that's the end of episode 3. Yeah. <laughs>